Hi folks, Robert O'Brien from O'Brien Guitars here. I'm here today with Peter Burroughs of Burroughs Instruments. And Peter's a former student of mine, I guess, huh? in, in a way. Well, off and on, every time, every chance I get, I yeah. guess. And he has built a very interesting guitar, as you can see here. And this is, is there a name for this thing? Um, I would call it an arch top, but it's only semi-arched. It's, uh, I call it the steel top. Um, Corrugated tin roof. Yes, weathered, corrugated. Weathered, well with some used. paint on it even. Look at that. Yeah, paint stains, bullet holes, the whole nine yards. I, uh, I had Peter in my shop today. We're doing a little remedial study and work on French polish. And he brought this instrument. I'm going to let him talk about it because I always like to turn the camera on when I get these interesting instruments in the, in the shop here. So go ahead. Take it away, Peter. What you got? Well, while we're on the subject of French polish, it's possible that I'm the first guy in the known universe to have put a French polish on a forklift pallet. I can't say for sure, but, but it's a definite possibility. It was made out of forklift pallet wood. So this is uh, red oak. Um, it was beautifully quarter sawn. I don't know why they built a pallet out of it. I carefully preserved the nail holes by, by filling it with uh, very thin epoxy to lock up any cracks that might be there and then clear epoxy. So they're stabilized. And then uh, gluing the top on was that. That was the biggest thing. I thought about that for oh, several years. And uh, that turns out to be a challenge. Gluing anything to, to galvanize is a known challenge. And I did lots of experimentation. The first thing you might think of, which I did, was JB Weld, which is great stuff for metal. You know, you can repair cylinder heads. I've actually rep repaired a cylinder head with that stuff. It works. Doesn't work on galvanized. I even talked to the people at JB Weld. They said, no, we got nothing for that. Doesn't, doesn't help. So more experimentation and came up with Gorilla Glue, there which... You go. I have never used Gorilla Glue for anything, and has <laughs> certainly never seen the inside of my little Lou 3. But it works. It works great. And uh, it's a polyethylene-based glue, which is it's basically um, Gorilla wood glue, although I used uh, a different, a different uh, brand. And uh, so to do this, you might think it has no top binding, but it actually does have a top binding. Because the first step I did was put the, uh, put the top face up into a radius dish. In this case, it was about a six foot cylindrical radius. Uh, can't bend it the other way, so we're not gonna get a spherical radius. And then using a eighth inch bandsaw blade, cut out little scalloped uh, pieces to go around. I took blocks of wood, you know, like three inch wide, and ran them through the bandsaw, laid them out, and then cut them out to about a half inch band, got those all glued in place, and, uh, and then leveled all that off took the radius dish in the same manner you would do a uh, binding jig. I used my binding router, used that as a leveling thing and moved that around, got that surface all leveled off. And uh, the steel top's actually cut by water jet, uh, kind of like cutting out by laser, different technology. It's a very fast, easy, inexpensive technology. They cut the F holes in the perimeter, had to cut an eighth of an inch inside the line. So after I got all these interface blocks flatted off, then I bent a strip around here, just, just a one inch strip of oak around here that matched the sides. And see, so that's actually a separate piece. You can't see that, but it's, it's not meant to be seen. And then flatted that all off. And meanwhile, the sides were bent in the conventional way, put in the kerfing all the way around and used a basically zero radius dish, sand got that all level. Then I could put the top together with, with the sides. So it has both an interface block rim and the kerfing around here. You can't even tell. And it's like binding. Yeah, and it's I- like the top was just inset into the, into the rims. And artistically, I wanted that to disappear. I didn't want to call attention to the scallops around the edge because it might look frilly. So just artistically, I, I wanted to like tone that down. Obviously, you can see the scallops, but I didn't want it to show off as a, as a wavy line. So there's kind of a lot of artistic thought going into this as well. And then uh, yeah, plain binding in the back. Ebony? Uh, no, or that's actually fiber? the ABS binding. Oh, okay. Yep, that was my first experience with plastic bindings, yep, yep. and that worked out well. Yep. Um, and pickups, what do you use for the electronics in there? Those are uh, Seymour Duncans. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, you know, it's sort of, sort of a built out of trash, but at a certain point, I want to go first class, um, which I can talk more about. But those are the uh, 59 Blues vintage uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. Um, one of my first experiences with electric guitars, except for one I owned a long time ago. Talk um, a little bit about that tailpiece down there. I thought that was interesting. It's got his logo in there. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's also water jet cut. And uh, again, water jet is an amazing technology. That's pretty much as cut and they just buzzed over it with an orbital sander. That's about it. That cost me, I think, 15 bucks a piece. I had three of them made, <laughs> 15 a piece. The top only cost me 20 bucks to get cut. Again, I had th three of them cut. Um, I put the bullet holes in myself because I felt it needed a little artistic balance between the <laughs> rust stains here. It needed a little, you know, a little distressing up here. Lovely. What's it sound like? Oh. I think we have to turn it on. <laughs> Huh. Sounds like everybody else's electronics. <laughs> there you go. Wow, what a great piece of Americana. That's, I, love, I love it. Fantastic uh, job and... Uh, Thanks for bringing it into the shop, Peter. Sure. Well, and note the recycle symbol. It's very, very important. This is a sustainable resources here. So you can build a guitar out of anything, folks. Happy building. <laughs>